What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are back to discuss Detroit Lions training camp. Day number seven is in the books, man. And we got a lot of takeaways today. Things got physical. Some physical drills came out. So let's get it started. We're, we're going to bite a kneecap off and we're going to stand up. And then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down. And on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap and we're going to get up. And then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you. Before. Before long, we're the, going to be the last one standing. Welcome, everybody, to another video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, we're back for another exciting day of Lions training camp with some takeaways. And my goal for this video is to make it shorter than the last. But I don't want to make any promises because when I do that, the video usually ends up longer. But that's not my goal. It's My goal is to make this one shorter, okay? So I'm going to do my best. I have the most important details in here. I took out some of the smaller ones. But everything that you need to know, we're going to discuss in today's video. Now, because this was the second day of padded practice for Lions, and things are getting a little physical you know guys are hitting each other yesterday we had a little bit of a slap fight because of this there are some injuries now i don't think anything super serious here throw through the attendance today for the detroit lions who was out on the field participating now there's not a ton of new names to this list and i think hopefully there wasn't any like serious injuries that these guys were dealing with i do think the lions were taking things very cautionary where if you're dealing with anything hey you know go rest make sure you're healthy it doesn't make sense to try to push through it i know roster bubble players they want to get out there they want to compete but let's make sure you guys are healthy and i think that's what the lions are doing so there's a lot of names on this list but a lot of these names are already here so there's not a ton of new additions but some players did leave practice early maybe they left and came back maybe they had work with the trainers off to the side we'll run through the names evan brown remains on the nfi list so no new news there for evan brown we do have evan bohm who we signed from the dolphins from the colts playing that center and guard position getting some reps but he remains on the nfi list jalen reese maven remains on the COVID list for the detroit lions man i want to see him get back because some of these linebackers are impressing me i want to see what jrm can do in this defense now we do have some news here Reggie Gilbert has been released, the outside linebacker from Tennessee, from Green Bay. And I thought when we signed him, you know, he had a he had a puncher's chance to make this team. Look, the edge position was deep, but there was no, like, you know, locks aside from, like, Trey and Romeo. A lot of new pieces, a lot of cheap deals here. You know, you would expect a guy like Julian O'Quarr to kind of be a lock, but even a guy like Austin Bryant, you weren't really sure. But they have released Reggie Gilbert, but unfortunately for him, he's missed the last couple of days of training camp. And that may have been an issue for the Lions because they haven't been able to see him. Austin Bryant's return. Charles Harris has looked solid. Even Rob McCray has surprised me a little bit. Plus, Julian O'Quara hasn't looked bad either. So for Detroit, you have what you have in Trey and Romeo. They have released Reggie Gilbert. They open up a roster spot. Maybe they can go sign someone at a different position that they think they may need it. I don't know. But either way, good luck, Reggie Gilbert. Hopefully you find a job elsewhere. And who knows, maybe you'll land with us once again. He also, Quentin Dunbar was once again not there participating for the Lions today. It's still that personal issue. And I was looking. I was searching while they were warming up. I was like, where is this dude at? Could not find him. He was not there, unfortunately. Alex Brown. Michael Brockers was out there, but he wasn't wearing pads. He went through walkthroughs for the Lions at the beginning before they started stretching. But that's pretty much all we saw. So he was there. He was out there at practice, but he wasn't wearing pads. He wasn't, you know, hitting other players. He's a vet. You kind of know what you're going to get from him, but hopefully it's nothing too serious. Again, I think the Lions are playing the cautionary game here. Derek Barnes, another name that we've seen on this list. Really no participation from Derek Barnes. Two new names, Terrell Crosby and Dedrick Mills. Now, Crosby really didn't participate today, but I didn't think there was any kind of significant injury that he's dealing with. Now, I know there has been some trade rumors out there, but there is no way in heck the Lions are trying to wait Terrell Crosby. I mean, you got to get a very good return because there's no way I'd be trying trading this guy away. When you look at the backup offensive line, there's still a huge amount of question marks. And Terrell's that guy, you know what you're going to get. That can play multiple spots. Ain't no way I'd be trading him away. But also Dedrick Mills. Now, Mills did practice today. He just didn't practice the entire time. But he did practice it. Again, I don't think there was any kind of significant injury here. And he didn't look bad. I mean, he surprised me. He's had a couple reps. So I'm like, oh, that looks pretty good. Levi, he was not in the rotation for team drills. He did have pads on, but he was not going really through team drills. When Bryant was out there. He was going through, you know, the beginning, the warm-ups. But he didn't go through really any kind of team drills. I mean, he had like a couple of reps, but that was basically it. So we didn't see a lot of Austin Bryant. But I think he, it's good that he's slowly kind of working his way back, you know, we're going to see him pretty darn soon. Did have Austin Bryant do his 40 up downs to begin practice with the defense all around him. They're watching him do it. First time we've got him off the pup list and he's actually out there in pads. Healthy, well, somewhat healthy. So he's out there doing the up downs. And I guess this is kind of like, you welcome to the squad. You can play in defense, do your 40 up downs, give it to us, then you're in. Like, that's how you join the club. You know, that's, a, that's what you got to do first. What do they call it? I can't think of what they call it. It's like something you got to do it to get in. Oh, initiation initiation <laughs> that's what it's called we'll give you the new member initiation are you ready patrick ready 
Welcome to our club. However, about halfway through, maybe maybe about two thirds of the way through, the rest of the defense started doing it with him, and it got kind of hyped. So that was kind of cool. And Campbell wasn't over there doing it. What I could tell, I don't think this is something the coaches are telling them to do. I think the players have just decided, like halfway through, now we're doing it with you. You did your first half, let's do the next half with you. Maybe it's something like that. Uh, now, players that dealt with an injury during practice. Let, let's talk about those guys. First off, Jerry Jacobs. He dealt with an injury during practice. He actually walked off of practice. Jermar Jefferson. I didn't even see this one, but he dealt apparently with something slight. However, he went back out there and started playing. He, he played a lot today because there was no DeAndre Swift. I didn't see him, you know, deal with anything, but at the end of practice, he wasn't even there. So I'm pretty sure he left to the locker room. Don't know what's going on with DeAndre Swift, but because of that, Jamal became the number one. Jamar became the number two. And Jamar looked good today. Whoa, we'll, hey, we'll get into it. I'm glad he's getting those reps. We hope everything is okay with DeAndre Swift. Again, I don't think there was any kind of serious injury where it's like, oh, this guy's hopping off. They need people to help him off. But guys are definitely dealing with some bumps and bruises. Khalif Raymond, during practice, he caught a crossing route. And when he got tackled, he came up a little hobbling. He went up to the side. He got some ice from some trainers. But he, I think, would end up actually getting back onto the field. So, oh, and also Julian Okwara. He left early. So, yes, players are definitely dealing with some bumps and bruises. Hopefully nothing serious. I didn't think any of these were super serious, but there's a lot of names here. I guess it's not super surprising because for a long time, these guys haven't been hitting each other. Now all of a sudden it's like, hey, we're hitting again. And these practices are starting to get physical. So I think their body's like, oh, we're doing this. So some of these guys may have to just kind of get into the flow of it. Again, take it cautionary. Don't try to rush these players back. You know the roster bubble players are going to try to get back as fast as they can, but I don't think there's anything super serious. But who knows? We'll see. Either way, a lot of names on this list, but the practices are getting sort of physical, and, you know, the pads are coming on, so that's what you expect. You practice today for the Detroit Lions. What went down? All right, what went down? I know, yes, things were physical. Well, let's talk about that physical drill for the Lions. And this was really cool. They ran it right in front of us. We talked about yesterday how they did kind of that special teams drill where it looked like the blocker had to pick up kind of a gunner who was trying to make his way back to the returner was. And that's when we saw like the little slap fight. Well, today... We had another physical drill. It actually was interesting as the Lions put Amon Ross St. Brown out there to get the first rep, a guy that got into the fight yesterday. So it's not like the Lions are like, oh my gosh, you can't play because it's like the way they handle this is like it happens. Let's move on from it. Let's roll from it. And uh, But you like the competitive nature. You don't want to see guys getting hurt. You don't want to see guys jumping into this. But there is competitive players here. And you knew these two guys were competitive when you drafted them. So what did they do? Well, I'll show you a little diagram on the screen right now. This is my best representation. I don't know what you would call this. I'm sure there's a lot of names. It's not like your typical Oklahoma drill, but you had a defender in one corner and you had an offensive player in the other corner. Now, this was specifically for receivers, running backs, tight ends, fullbacks, and defensively, it was defensive backs. So safeties, cornerbacks, linebackers. You didn't get linemen out there. That, that was not part of this drill, but they put a whole line you know, so all, the entire team is watching. Then you had us watching from the other side. So it was a really cool angle, but everybody got involved. And it's like one of those things like they had going on yesterday with the special teams drill. It takes you back to Miami when they had the Oklahoma drill where everybody's involved. And they just, for about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, they just go at it, right? Everybody's watching. So it really just... It brings those competitive juices out of these guys because they're out there. They're in front of everybody. They want to make a play, right? They want to go out there. They want to juke someone out. And they also want to make that big hit. All the coaches are watching. So this is like things get really feisty. They get intense. They get competitive. And I wouldn't say I have any like major takeaways from this because it was just one of those drills where the offense player would try to score, juke them out, run to the end zone. They didn't have to try to run them over. It was like however you can get in. I would say it was probably – five to ten yards wide it wasn't super wide but there was some room maybe maybe pushing 10 yards wide and the defense player had to stop him right I mean it was just as simple as that simple as that and we saw some good reps I would say early the defensive backs came out pretty strong they're making a lot of really good sound tackles not many guys were getting by and then that looked good I mean this is one of those drills where there's two sides to it you want to see the offense player make a miss but at the same time you want to see the defense player make tackles because you want to see them make tackles in open field so it's tough sometimes with these to say oh they did good because like oh you're going against your team so well like in these drills I don't know do I cheer I'm like how do, I don't want to cheer because he missed the tackle but then he makes the tackle I don't want to cheer because that guy got smacked so it's, it's weird defensive backs came out strong they were really really tackling really well they were low i mean it looked good they looked very disciplined early receivers started to take a little bit more advantage of the defensive backs really their second time through the offensive players started to you know make guys miss pretty consistently there but pretty much throughout the entire thing the running backs 
they, they were a problem. They, the running backs consistently scored. I know Jermar Jefferson went two for two. I know Jamal Williams put some dudes on skates. The running backs pretty much consistently. Deidre Camille's, like whoever you want to throw into this mix, they had good reps here. Ray Jacobs uh, had a nice tackle. I think he had one for two, but he had one really nice tackle. If he, you know, he laid a pretty big hit. You know, he's a big hitter. You could see it though. I think the guy that he tackled actually may have scored. He got like the 10 yards, but he hit him really well. He got him low and he just kind of wrapped him up and took him out of bounds. Chris Brown had a nice tackle as well. Sean Deon Hamilton, who had a big hit. He had a strip hit. All right. We had a couple of those. And those linebacker drills where they're working on stripping it, it's paying off because we've seen some strips so far through practice since that drill. Bobby Price, and I think even Jason Govinda tackled somebody. I, I don't know. I, I have 45, and I'm pretty sure we only got 145 on the team. So I don't know. But I think Jason Govinda may have been playing both sides. Offensively, Mon Ross St. Brown scored both times he had the ball. The first time he juked out a defender and kind of walked in, he's just super shifty. And the second time, he kind of just ran straight. I mean, it was like the defender was like, oh, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? And he just kind of walked in. So, yeah, I don't know. But Amon Ross St. Brown, that's the kind of thing. Like, when he's in space, some of these guys, you just want to know that they can beat their dude in space. And St. Brown was that. Even Jeff Okuda, he he missed his first rep defensively. Because Jamal Williams, man, he shook the heck out of Tracy Walker. I wasn't, ex I wasn't expecting that because Jamal's not the shiftiest guy. He has said he's trying to add some of that to his game. But when he lined up against T-Walk, yeah, he shook him out of his boots. Jamar Jefferson beat Michael Pittman. Diedrich Mills, he beat Devontae Beckett. And even Hawk. He shook Jamie Collins. I wouldn't say that's a huge surprise, but it was nice to see that, some of that agility there. But overall, this is a fun drill. I don't think anybody, you know, got hurt during this drill. Maybe they did, but I don't think anybody got hurt during this drill. Mixed in also two little drills I wanted to take note of. First off, the receivers did like a little relay race where they would like, kind of work through like a relay, like pads, and then they go over to cones, and then they have to shuffle through, and then they have to catch the pass. They did that. They broke into two groups. Loser had to do push-ups. That was a good competition way for Antoine Randall-L. Then defensive backs, they were working on high-pointing passes. Deep passes thrown out of the jug machine, high point picks, not just, you know, catching it, jumping up and going and taking it out of the air. Either way, it was a fun drill to watch, and there was just a lot of competitive juices flowing there. And then they went to those one-on-one -on -one drills, like we talked about yesterday, wide receiver versus defensive back. Now, while they were doing that on the other side, which we were in front of, they did, like, offensive line versus defensive line, like, just rushing the football. So not all the defensive backs were there. Like, they had some safeties, but not everybody was there, specifically one name was Tracy Walker. Tracy Walker was not out there. He's obviously our top safety, right? But he was not out there going through these drills with the scrimmage. He was on the other side. Now, eventually, guys started to work their way over to that side of the field, work on those one-on-ones. Tracy Walker started off on the other side of the field. And it, to me, it looked like Aubrey Pleasant, specifically with Tracy Walker. And he does this with a lot of guys, but he seemed to have a very big focus on Walker. And I think that was something that they wanted to help. Yesterday, he didn't look great in one-on-one -on -one drills, giving a lot of space. And I think for Tracy Walker, they're really trying to improve his man-to-man -man cover. And Aubrey Pleasant seemed to be doing a pretty good job. Now, he did allow two of two in this drill, but he was in good spots. And you can see Aubrey Pleasant, you know, even when the guy gets beat, he shows him some love, talks to him right after the play of what just happened, and he goes through it with the defensive backs. But it seemed like they're trying to improve his man-to-man -man defense when they throw him into those situations this season. Will Harris has surprised me. He's looked really good at man-to-man -man situations. Even Dean Marlowe has looked good. Second time he went out there, he lined up against Khalif Raymond, which is just a really tough matchup for a safety. Of course, he gave a separation. Now, Khalif did beat him on a corner route came up with the reception but Tracy Walker was in a really good spot it bite on any kind of fake he stayed low stayed very balanced and he didn't shift his body weight to one way or another off the fake he got himself a position where he probably could have made a play on the football he just was unable to hit the football but he was in a spot where I wouldn't have been surprised if he was able to get a PBU on that so it looked good the second rep and uh Ari Pleasant went over there gave him some love gave him you know gave, gave him some love you know he gave the completion he knows that he was in the right spot and uh, you're going to make plays once you do that. He's trying to build up that confidence for Tracy Walker. And that was clearly a place that they were focusing on. Jerry Jacobs, man, he's continued to have good reps against pretty much anybody he lines up across. Good and bad, right? I'm not saying he's out there dominating, but he's had some good reps. One of them came in this drill against Brashad Perriman. Now, Perriman did have a step because Jacobs isn't really Perriman's speed. It was a deep route. It was kind of like a vertical route that they ran. It was slightly under thrown. He was about a yard behind him. So, yes, technically, this is a perfect pass. He probably could have caught it. But Perriman had to turn around, kind of come back to the football and try to make a play like that. He kind of opened his body. And Jerry Jacobs played right through his body and knocked it out. Now, later, he would give up a completion to Chad Hansen. Now, one of the best matches is they put Amon St. Brown 
on Jeff Okuda. And this was cool because Okuda's usually been guarding Tyrell Williams. But I, I was talking about, I want to see Okuda play against Perriman. Well, today, they threw him against Amon Ross St. Brown. And Amon Ross St. Brown, man, gosh, he is shifty as heck. Well, they went one of two. The first one I didn't get a great view of. Apparently, it was a drag route that St. Brown ran where Jeff Okuda was all over it, fell incomplete. Okuda's really done a good job this year of being able to stick with different route combinations. I mean, he's not only making plays on deep routes, he's also making it underneath routes, intermediate routes. We'll talk about that in 11 on 11s, but he made a play there. And then St. Brown came back and he was able to beat him on a comeback route. Saw last year and play some reps and slot, play a little bit of outside. You never know who you're going to match up week, week to week, no matter where you line up on the field, especially in a defense that passes off defenders, that offensive players. So you got to be tested for everybody. The best corners are tested against every type of receiver, and that's what the Lions are doing. So I like that, and pretty much he's answered the bell, I would say. He still has that confidence and swagger about him. Didn't really have that big play today. If he came up with a pick, woo, a fourth pick, baby. I'm telling y'all, like when I give credit to the secondary, I know the offense is there's reasons to be slightly concerned and we'll get into that, but there's also reasons to be optimistic of this secondary. I'm telling you because guys are stepping up and making plays. There's also these players that maybe have a day of struggling. Iffy, you know, where he's, you know, he's getting beat, right? He's getting beat one-on-ones, but then he flashes, bam, big play. And you can see the potential. Jerry Jacobs, you could see the potential with these young guys. Jared Goff passed to Tyrell Williams. Now, one thing that if he has lining up against a guy like Tyrell is if he has size and speed. That's a really good matchup for Iffy because he has a very good build to keep with a guy like Tyrell. And when we talk about this season, you know, we're going to use Tyrell in the slot, things like that. If he is the type of defender that you'd want to throw against him, you know, and if, if he can build that trust in his coaches, which he's starting to get higher reps and he's being used all over the field. We talked about it yesterday. That's going to be huge. So a pick today was awesome. Four straight days with a pick. This one again came on Jared Goff. It wasn't an 11 on 11. So Jared Goff isn't not going to throw the football. Like that's the thing. You're forced to throw it in this drill. If you're going to run a vertical route, I'm going to, I'm not going to just hold the ball. Hey, well, you know, he won't open. You got to throw the ball out there in 11 on 11. Golf hasn't been forcing those. This drill, he threw it up there, and if he made a play, so that's awesome. But if he today, as well, I saw it, they had him moving all over the field because I was looking for it after hearing about it yesterday, and they did. They put him everywhere. They had him lining up at nickel. They had him inside. They played him outside, and it was nice to see that. Now, I didn't see him line up at safety, but he did play a lot of different matchups against all types of receivers, you know, smaller receivers, bigger receivers. So he's going to be kind of a, a cool little piece the Lions can throw in there this season. If he can continue to build this confidence within the staff, his versatility is really through the roof. We're kind of waiting for this to happen. And now we're starting to see it, right? We had the idea this could happen, and now we're really starting to see it. Even on 11s, this was perfect. I'm telling you, the, the viewing area today was just beautiful. It was just right in front of us. I was like, yes, I don't have to move. This is great. And I got some takeaways. Got some big takeaways here. So let's start off with schematically some of the takeaways that I had. First off, the Detroit Lions are using a lot of heavy personnel sets. What do I mean by that? Fullbacks, tight ends. Now, of course, they're going to do this to get base situation reps. But I'm just saying, don't be shocked the Lions are doing this because they've been doing it a lot. They're not just like, oh, hey, let's try this for a couple snaps. Like, no, they're doing this consistently. A lot of heavy sets. There is an emphasis on being able to run the ball, and their formations tell you that. All right? Constantly putting two tight ends on the field. Usually they at least have one. But they'll put Hawk and they'll put Fells. They'll use a fullback. They're using a fullback a lot more than maybe I anticipated. And that's why Kabinda might be in a good spot. He's got competition because Mills has shown us a little bit too. They might find a way to keep them both and maybe go lighter in a different spot. But Kabinda's been getting some reps at fullback. He's made some plays and they're going with the running back. So we've seen a lot of eye form sets, strong eye, weak eye. We've also seen two running back sets out of the shotgun, split sets. And this is where I think we saw Diedrich Mills versus versatility firsthand. Mills lined up on the right side, J Jamar Jefferson on the left side. Makes it kind of a weapon because Mills can run the ball. He can pass catch, but he's also shown us he can lead block. And that's what they did today. They did a rep where out of the shotgun, they had Dedrick Mills take off to the right, lead block, and Jamar Jefferson followed behind. So that stuff was kind of cool. We always talked about the theory of that happening with like Jamal Williams and stuff. I got to give credit to Kabinda because Kabinda has been competing for a very similar role. They've been getting Kabinda involved in terms of handoffs. They've been handing him off the ball multiple times, letting him run. So there's definitely competition between those two. It's going to be tough to have both make the team, but this is what the Lions are going to want to do defensive, offensively. Maybe Mills gets puts on the practice squad or something. But regardless, the run game is definitely something the Lions are focused on. You can see it just by their personnel. Well, I sound like a broken Roker record, right? Jamar Jefferson, I'm... Don't sleep on this dude, okay? There was no Swift going through these drills in the end of practice. So Jamar Jefferson was the number two back. Now, Jamal, he looks solid. You know, I wouldn't say any play. I was like, whoa, that, that's Jamal Williams. He looks solid. He looks like Jamal you expect. Against the first team, four to five yards. 
four to five yards. Zone running plays, four to five yards. You know, he hits the hole. He doesn't try to be fancy. He takes what there's there, and he'll give you consistent three to five yards. It's just what Dan Campbell said that he wants. So you like that. And also, by the way, they mixed in a draw, too, from under center. I thought that was cool. We haven't seen a ton of that. So I, I do like that. You see Anthony Lynn mixing up. Defense shows pressure. Okay, let's go to a draw. Anthony Lynn, man, he, he's, got, he's got a noggin. Williams has been solid. Really, a lot more of their success came today specifically on zone runs. Godwin Iguabike actually had a pretty nice run as well on his own run. He still seems a little bit raw to that position. Like, it's a little bit new for him. All right, some things it just kind of looks a little little unpolished. Power rushing plays, you know, you're talking about straight at the gut, things like that. The defensive line, they ate a little bit. They did eat a little bit, specifically against the second string offensive line. But Jamar Jefferson today, again, he's a stud. I mean, you can see it. Like, this is a great viewpoint. We saw some big plays broken yesterday, but to see it right in front of you was awesome because Jamar Jefferson has great vision. And there was one play that stuck out to me. All right, and this is something that we just have not seen from running backs. Jamar Jefferson, one of his biggest strengths is simply vision. May not be the fastest, may not be the strongest, but he knows where he's going. And that sets up big plays. He has a lot of big plays in his past. And one perfect example, they ran an inside handoff, like right behind the right yard. Takes a couple of steps, sees nothing there, and instantly bounces it to the outside. And it was pretty. The defense collapsed inside, broke it outside, and he probably went at least for 25 yards breaking outside. But he's got fantastic vision, great cutback vision. They give him a lot of tosses. They get things to the outside for him to allow him to cut back. Those zone running plays where he has a lot of success, but even in a play that was right up the gut, it was cool to see him bounce it to the outside. Jamar Jefferson has been shining bright consistently now for two days straight. And I like what I'm seeing out of that, dude. I'm, I'm glad because I had high hopes. But he is clearly taking over the number three running back role. Like, he looks like he's in possession of that role. And so far, so good. Pass catching, pass blocking, those are places that the Lions are focusing their work with him. But as a runner, this dude can run. Passing game in a second, but I want to talk about this defense. Because the offense played a lot of second string reps. And since there was no Terrell Crosby today, there was a lot of unproven offensive linemen on the field. And when they did that, oh gosh. I mean, this defensive line eight. And the defensive line made some plays even against the starters as well. So I won't even just say this is just the backups here making plays. Specific guys that stuck out to me today on this defensive line, Deshaun Hand. Hand looked like a man on a mission. I mean, my goodness, it's a limited Penasini. There was no Michael Brockers. There was no Levi. So a guy like Deshaun Hand, Nick Williams, Aline, those were like the three dudes on that defensive line. And Deshaun Hand, when Ty Walsh talked about he can be special, he looked special today. Deshaun Hand was making so many plays. Every time you turn around, he was making a play. He was getting either pressure, he was flying off the ball, making a play in the backfield. He's the type of guy that's got to get downhill because he was doing a lot, and we we do need to keep him healthy. Almost forget how much talent Deshaun Hand has. Sometimes he just was running free, completely back to the quarterback, and the quarterback would have to just, you know, I mean, they wouldn't he wouldn't actually sack him because he was back there. It would have been a sack, but Deshaun Hand, oh, he was on it today. I mean, this guy was blowing up plays consistently. I wrote his name down like four times. Sector had a nice rep today, tackle for loss. I'm pretty sure it also led to a fumble as well, very early in these reps. Nick Williams made some plays in the backfield, but Hand really stuck out to me, and Aline McNeil. Lee McNeil at 3.30, he is so athletic. We saw some of the glimpses in one-on-ones, but when you really eye in and just, you know, take that little single vision and watch Lee McNeil work, one gap, if he's attacking one side of a center, oh gosh, he can blow up things in the backfield. He's got a super quick get-off, and it leaves the problems for the offense because he can, right off the snap, he can beat you. Lee McNeil's get-off is so impressive, very quick hands, but he's been getting a lot of first-team reps. Like I said, this dude's NFL ready. He's ready to go right now, and today we saw that he was playing at extremely high levels. In the linebacker group, I would say they didn't make as many plays today as they've made the last couple of days. Anthony Pittman had a chance at a PBU. He was just a little bit late to it. Alex Anzalone, there was a big pass to a tight end. I think it was Darren Fells, where he got a little bit too sucked into the line of scrimmage. They still do fly around, but they didn't have the plays that we saw last couple of days. However, to July Tavai is the guy that stuck out to me because while Tavai didn't have like a key play where it was like a pick or something like that, he did have a pass break up on a leak to the outside, but also he looks really fast. Tavai looks like a completely different player, and this is the first time I really got to see him because he hasn't practiced that much. I'm not saying he was a fast linebacker, but he could fly around a little bit. He made a nice play side to sideline to sideline. He jumped on a flat route, and he was getting big reps. No Riz Maven, no Derek Barnes. Some guys are missing, right? Sean Dan Hamilton, you know, he was showing some ability. He had a blitz today that would have turned into a sack, so they've been using these guys in a lot of different ways. The Lions may think kind of highly of him because I know at least today we'll see how it progresses. But today he was mixing it with Jamie Collins. He was kind of like the second second string linebacker, inside linebacker it seemed like today. That's where he was getting his reps. Early in practice it didn't seem like that. But once they got to 11-11, he was like the second string inside linebacker. They must like what he can do and the versatility that he can bring because when Jamie would come out, they would put him in. So that was kind of cool. I like seeing that. Giant Divide 
kind of has a similar build to Jimmy. I mean, they were, you know, drafted for the Patriots scheme, for Matt Patricia's scheme, so it kind of makes sense. Also, I got to show some love to Jay Sean later in the 11-11s. In the Jay Sean got some pressure, but the defensive line made some plays. The offensive line didn't create a whole bunch of separation on those inside running plays. They did well in zone running plays, and the second unit really struggled, so that's the spot where the lines need to improve. When they put their first string defensive lineman, not really first string because some of the guys were missing, against the second string offensive line, no. No, it, it, it was honestly a disaster. But at the same time, it's nice to see that. No, you don't want to see your offensive line get beat. But at the same time, your defensive line should dominate the second season. Like, if I put my... They're not starters. I get it, right? Ham may not be a starter this season, right? I mean, Nick Williams may not be a starter. Lee McNeil could be. But when you put those guys out against second string offensive linemen, they should stick out you should be able to tell that's what they're going against and today you could tell numbers will rise if they're going more one gap sets especially when they put the five guys along the line the other two outside linebackers you see a lot of that speaking of that trey flowers had a nice play today he didn't get a pass breakup but he did show some flash of getting out to the outside you know he had a pbu yesterday today he goes out there jumps on a pass to, to the uh, on a dump off he didn't break it up but you know when it was caught he probably would have gained two yards on that so flowers this show ability to run out there with the running back you're seeing him get a little bit more comfortable in that role and the lions have been you know asking guys to leak out a little bit now trey flowers hasn't been dropping super far into coverage but they've been asking him to and you can see he seems to be getting a little bit more comfortable with that role and i wouldn't even say i'm concerned here because i'm telling you the secondary is playing well and at the same time, yes, Jared Goff is not really forcing deep passes, but he's also completing at a pretty high rate in the short and intermediate range. Now, they haven't taken a ton of deep shots, but also keep in mind when you're in a split safety coverage, that's built to very really limit deep passes down the field and limit those shots. Goff, I think he just really has to continue to go to his chemistry. I would like to see him take more shots, but at the same time, you are seeing good decisions. You know, he's not chucking the ball deep down the field just to do it. You're seeing good decisions. He occasionally has one or two here and there, and we'll talk about one that he did have. I would like to see more, and hopefully this starts to break up a little bit, break out a little bit more as we go through training camp. But in the first preseason game, I guess if he's playing, we'll get a good glimpse of it, of how much he attacks downfield. He's completing at a high rate. He just hasn't been taking a lot of shots deep, but remember, his Split safety coverage is built really at its foundation to limit deep plays. The Rams last season gave up almost no deep plays whatsoever. I mean, they gave up like a, what was it, like a 14 pass rating on deep shots. It just doesn't give up deep shots down the field. Now, I'm not saying the Lions are the Rams, but that's kind of what the defense is intended for. The single high, you can get a lot more one-on-one -on -one looks. So you get more opportunities to do that like the Lions ran last season. So it's not like he's not taking a deep shot and then he's throwing an incomplete pass. He's going back underneath and he's completing it. And the offensive line has done a good job here. The starters did today in pass protection. There were two reps individually where it stuck out to me. They were doing pretty good in pass pro. I mean, sure, defense line had their moments, specifically against the second defense line, but there were couple times that Jared Goff had like all day one time Jared Goff went through every single progression and he threw it to the running every progression he didn't even move in the pocket I mean he just stood there and looked back to back and then Blau one time had he was probably in pocket for like five seconds they literally blew the whistle while he still had the ball that's how long the offensive line protected so there were some nice pass protection reps from that first unit the passing game a lot of the you know production has continued to come from the tight end position the running backs and fullbacks as well and those receivers on crossing routes underneath routes so same Brown you know we talk about I think he's gonna lead more receptions for a receiver and that's the kind of routes they're throwing. You know, you saw Khalif Raymond get involved. They've ran some dregs. You know, he got injured on that one, but they've done doing that. So they've been getting guys involved over middle, but tight ends. They, I mean, I wouldn't say they're not taking shots completely because the tight ends have been catching some deep passes. They're just not streaks. They're not verticals to the outside receivers. That's kind of what people like to see. They're exciting. But if the tight end's catching a 15-yard route, I'll take that all day, especially when a guy like TJ Hawkinson catches right off the bat. He catches a nice route on a play action. I think it was a play action rollout for Jared Goff, and he went at least 40 yards. I mean, his yak was probably 30 yards on that play. Deep crosser, right side of the field, and he took off, made some guys miss, and took off downfield. Darren Fells had some nice plays over the middle as well. So tight ends have been a very heavy part of this. So while you're not getting those deep shots really consistently with the outside receivers, first off, we need to see them consistently on the field so they can grow that chemistry. It's also part of kind of the defense scheme for limiting this is because when Brashad Perham was going through one-on-ones yesterday, I, people just couldn't keep up with him. He's one of the best man coverage receivers. Like you just put him one-on-one -on, -one on an island, you're going to have issues. If you're running vertical routes to Perriman, you better believe there's going to be a safety sliding over top. I, yeah, Goff hasn't taken advantage of all the one-on-ones there. He's not taking that deep shot to Perriman doesn't mean it's not opening up things like Hawkinson over the middle. Because if you slide two guys to anybody, you're going to open up other things over the field. And that's why he's had so much success over the middle. So as long as Goff is making the right decisions i don't have an issue with it and when you play split safety looks really the best place to attack is over the middle now the safeties has done a good job flying around we talked about it t walk looks good there will harris they, they've really just limited things they've made it tough and when jared Goff has all day he just rolls through his progressions because 
There's no one open. There's going to be cover sacks here. I'm telling you, there's reason to be optimistic about this. Fullback Kavinda had a play action where he went for about 15 yards out of the backfield. So, and that unfortunately, that was on uh, Anthony Pittman, who got a little bit sucked inside. Now, he did have one deep completion today, and that specifically came to Brashad Perriman. Perriman, to me, from my view, I think he ran like a wheel route, may have been a double move on Jeff Okuda, and he hit Perriman. It was it was a pretty nice play. It wasn't the best throw in the world. He kind of had to turn around and come back to it, but it was, it was pretty nice. Okuda was about a step behind, and he went up and skied it right along the sideline, probably 20, 25 yards down the field. So that was one nice deep completion. Open up this year when you run the ball because right now the Lions are just mixing it. They're not actually moving the ball down the field. When they run it, okay, then they just reset at the same spot. So it's not like, you know, you're constantly moving down the field where the defense is like, we got to adjust and stop this run. And then you get those looks when a safety bump comes into the box. Right now, the Lions consistently sitting in base sets. It's tougher to get that. I know there's been some one-on-one -on -one reps that they haven't, you know, necessarily thrown. I think that's where they have to build that chemistry. But defensively, the secondary has played well. Michael Ford was a different player today, and that was huge. We saw him bounce back. Michael Ford made some nice plays. He had one nice one against Ratley, which fell incomplete. And then he came back, and this was pretty. And because there was no Quinn Dunbar, he was playing outside and inside. But specifically on the outside, Michael Ford gave up absolutely no spades whatsoever. And he had a pass breakup on Hanson. I mean, he was just right on him. And this was a shot that they took. I believe this was Tim Boyle. I'm not completely sure. But this was a shot they took downfield. But the cover, I mean, he was like, there was no spades whatsoever. So when you got guys like Mike Ford doing that, it's impressive. And I like to see the golf fire because he had that deep pass to Perriman. He came back a couple plays later. And a lot of this offense has also been quick slants. Quick separation. Bam. You know, sit it. McKinley. Perriman. Whoever it is. Ratley. Quick slants have been a big part. So linebackers are a little bit late. I would like to see him jump on some of those and try to make some plays, and hopefully we get one soon. However, there was one play specifically today where Jared Goff got it, went to a quick slant to Brashad Perriman, and Jeff Okuda jumped it, knocked it away, pass breakup. Pretty play. Very pretty play. And it was a good get off by Perriman. Okuda just got back into the play. And this is what I was talking about. He's covering it the whole route tree, which is impressive. And he understands his leverage. This is helping him a ton. It's helping him cover a lot more ground. And he did this against Perriman today, broke it up. And I liked it because when Jared Goff came off, and they went to their second rep. Jared Goff was mad. You could see in his face. He gave uh, Bashaw Perriman like an angry high five. Like, come on, man. Like, let's do this. Like, he was angry. See him go talk to the offensive lineman. The guy's a competitor. There's no question. I would not question whether or not he's a competitor. You'll see it when they're going through walkthroughs. You'll see a guy like Tracy Walker drop deep into coverage and Tra Will Harris just jump down on like an inside crosser. Now today we did have a drop in today. I think that was Tom Kennedy. And Kennedy made some plays, but he had a drop on a deep in today. But my point is, is like these deep safety, this two safety look is really benefiting them on these deeper routes, taking them away because they're jumping on things. Robert Pleasant, after every play, is going out there showing love and he's talking. To them. Even if they give it up, you know, he's going to show them some love. Even if they give up a completion, if they were in the right spot, he's going to show them some love. And after practice, you see him out there coaching guys they're in a huddle he's the only guy that has a group in a huddle an elder also looked better today like yesterday he was getting kind of he was getting kind of beat up on those one-on-ones now he didn't really get a really one-on-one -on -one reps but he did look better 11s on 11s and also an extra note here dave fip man that dude has some energy all right dave fip they were going through some punt drills at the end of jack fox did really well there he had some he had some ducks uh when he was just punting as far as he could but when they went to try to punt inside the five from their opponent's 42 and that's not a good place to punt from. He did have some good punts. They had some downs inside the inside the five. But Dave Fipp was hyped. I mean, he was running over. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm like, oh, snap. I didn't know Dave Fipp was like that. I, I mean, I really haven't seen it. So it's cool to see the different coaches and just some of their personality out there. For my takeaways from today's practice, it was another exciting practice. I, I'm excited about this run game. I'm excited about the secondary. I'll tell you if anything outlies. I'm really going to pay attention to some of these deep routes and see, uh, you know, what's going on there. I'm going to try to pay attention to the safeties and cornerbacks tomorrow and really focus on, okay, What's going on with these deep routes? You know, who should we really be giving credit to here? You no, know, you know, you could take shots and they're exciting. They're flashy. They hit the highlight reel. But a check down for five yards is a really good run play, right? So, what? what I mean, what's the issue with that? If I have my quarterback drop back and throw it five yards to the running back, it doesn't look fun. But it's also, if I ran the ball five yards, everybody's losing their mind. Oh, my gosh, what a great run. So, I mean, yeah, you take the check downs, but you can get them. And it helps you stay above the sticks. Because you're forcing things deep early and they're not there just to try to make a play. And then you get in second and 10, third and 10. Now you have to push the ball deep. Then defense can throw out those rushers. So, if you're able to pick up chunks, you know, consistently, you're able to just consistently go positive yards. It makes it tough, tough for a defense to throw those things out there like crazy blitzes or, you know, and get in those situations where they're an obvious passing down. So, never thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching. And I'm out.